Roswell Flight Test Crew back here at the 2015 Fat Shark U.S. Drone Racing National Championships, and I can't believe I got that all out in the first try. And I'm sitting here with a man who needs no introduction, Raphael Trappy Perker. How are you doing, Trappy? Hey, nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. And uh, so you're, I mean, it's hard to know where to start, honestly, with you. But, <laughs> but let, let's start with you, the racer. You're here racing. How's it going for you so I'm far? I'm not doing very well. I'm, not I'm <laughs> totally getting destroyed. <laughs> it's very embarrassing. <laughs> well, into every life, a little rain must fall, I exactly, suppose. Exactly, exactly. to be frank, you've got some really stiff competition here. Yeah, yeah. And I, if I may speculate, I mean, I suspect you're more like me in that you're, you're deeply involved in this activity. But it seems like the more you're the more you're involved in the activity, the less you get to fly. Exactly. Yeah, I haven't flown experience. in two and a half months. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, you are literally a man of the world. Where did you join us from to come here today? Uh, I flew in from Hong Kong. Wow. Yeah, okay. That's where our main facility is, and so yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. And you're originally from Austria. Exactly, and Switzerland. And Switzerland. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because everyone remembers your early videos. Gorgeous, you know, flying the through Alps, the mountains. Yeah. I mean, everyone, including me, I think, found those in deeply inspirational and realized, oh, there's really something here we need to be a part of. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, how long is the flight from Hong Kong? Is that terrible about, or horrible? No, it's it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, I flew with Chinese airlines, so oh. they're all a little bit smaller than we oh. are. Oh, <laughs> I I'm I'm a big guy. Yeah. You know, I got a big femur here, and there is only so long I can sit in a commercial airline seat, and yeah. I just, like, explode out of it like a <laughs> jack-in-the-box. I can't imagine a smaller one. That would be that would be too much. Well, why don't you bust out your machine here and yeah. show us what you're flying? All right. I'm flying uh, TVS Gemini. I popped off the hoods to get, save a little bit of weight. I added the blue and the pink hearts for good luck. And, um, yeah, we're flying a prototype of our race band video transmitter. So you guys are developing your own transmitter receiver set for the race band. Exactly. I mean, the race band is just a frequency set, right? So right. what we did is we changed out. We removed one band that we didn't need anymore, and we put in the race band. Um, it's, it's a lot lighter. So obviously for the smaller quads um, or the hexes, it's, it's a big advantage if you can save another 10, 15 grams. Absolutely. Now, yeah. I am... Um, I, I'm no race guy, and I'm frankly not much of a technical guy, but are these your ESCs stacked Exactly, up yeah. The, the neat thing about the Gemini is the stacked ESCs, so that way we can save really a lot of weight. Um, the Gemini is all up. It weighs less than most quads without a battery, without a camera. Now, I'm going to point out, we've had a lot of people in this chair here over the last couple of days. You're the first guy to be holding something with more than four propellers. <laughs> we had one guy with three, yeah. plenty with four, but you're the first guy with six. So what? And so, tell us a little bit more about this aircraft. The motors are well; they're your own, obviously. No, they're, they're a team motor, uh, thirteen oh six. Oh, they're a team yeah, motor. Yeah, uh, we just put the TBS okay. Gemini logo on oh, it. Oh, good. I thought I was everybody losing knows. my mind. No. Got it. Um, yeah, and uh, we run on four-inch props. Um, and the reason, or, or the design, is made by um, William Tilake. He also goes as Shreddicat. And to me, he's one of the most inspirational designers of airframes because he looks into nature. And so this was actually built off an, a very ancient sea creature. Interesting. And it has a kind of organic, flowy exactly. look to yeah. it. So um, at Team Black Sheep, we always try to, to find our inspiration in nature. So the Discovery model was actually made after a Da Vinci's model of, uh, of a human man. Oh, the, illustra the exactly. famous illustrated yeah. man. Yeah. And uh, so this guy here was built off a very ugly-looking sea creature. <laughs> we can't all be beautiful. <laughs> now, um, now I know one thing I noticed is that there's a, although it's a single-plate construction, the limbs have been somehow warped to camp the motors forward slightly. Exactly, yeah. So this is why the Gemini hasn't been out since. We actually started working on it in 2013, <laughs> and we released it um, late 2014. Got it. So this is the reason why, because it's really difficult to bend um, a three millimeter PCB and bend it in a way that it's um, within tolerances of uh, 0.5 degrees and also stays that way even in a hard crash. Well, that's a good point, because if, if these were inconsistent as you're manufacturing, your aircraft would just exactly. go Exactly. It would be all over the place, yeah. So what is the, what is the mission of the Gemini? Is it built as a racer or sort of... What is, what is the application you envisioned for this aircraft? When we started out designing it, um, it was just a small quad because there was no racing. Nobody 
people weren't going That's out in the point. fields, right? Yeah, people. So this this racing thing just started coming up, and so we put stronger motors in there, stronger ESCs. We cut down the weight a little bit, and so I would call this a really a purebred racer. I'm sorry, a very a, a purebred racer because it's really lightweight. Um, it's it it doesn't hold up crashes very well, but in a race, if you crash, you're disqualified you're anyway. Anyway, right, right. right so yeah. yeah. Um, and everything is made so that you can assemble it by hand. So you see these push pins? You can just pull them out. Oh. And then you can take out a motor, change out the motor. It's pluggable. Um, there's only two screws in the entire frame, and they're actually just to secure the camera a little bit more, and they're not really necessary. That's that's really cool. That is really, really cool. So, um, like, what a, so sort of run me through the specs. We've sort of covered all this, I think. But you've got yeah. four inch props here. What type are they and all that? Uh, they're four inch, uh, 4.5. Um, they're modeled after the gem fans. Okay. Um, your own props though, is that then? No, actually we sourced them out of China. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, we got the stackable ESCs with our own flight controller. It's a F4 based flight controller. F4? F4. Okay. So it's, it's got 170 megahertz. Um, the capabilities of this, because it's running Tau Labs, you could actually do waypoint missions just like you would do with the Ardu pilot. If you added a GPS, with, it has a port for it right here. Um, what else? It's 600 TV line camera. We've got the TBS um, core PMP25. So that's our little OSD with uh, power distribution. Ah. It runs on 3S and 4S. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, what are you racing with? Because I heard a lot of guys came out here with 4S batteries. They flew this course once and they went home and got their 3S batteries because this is not a course which really rewards speed. It's a course which rewards precision of flight. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I'm racing with the 4S. Okay. Um, because I'm changing the, the throttle a little bit lower. Oh, <laughs> so I just brought 4S, but, but during the, the yesterday night, we changed out the throttles to come a little bit more down. Got it, got um, it. To, to really manage the tight course. Now, one thing I want to ask about is you've got this. Is every, everyone out there knows this is an antenna, but it looks a little bit to me like a tooth. Uh, this yeah. is some kind of new antenna or something new you're playing with here? Yeah, this is a new dis antenna that we're going to be coming out with probably in about a month. Okay. month and a half. Um, it was designed by the man himself, I'd be crazy. Uh, so we've been working with him on that for almost two years now. Wow. Um, and really trying to get it, uh, trying to perfect it. It's... Um, the special thing about it is it's true circularity. So now, what is, now how is that? I mean, I, I fly circular polarized antennas, at least I think I do, but Tekkenstein, who talked to you yesterday, was mentioning something about the yeah. fact that it's true circular. What's the difference between, I guess, true circular and fake circular, right? I mean, uh, I don't no, know no, no, it no, it's not that way. Like, <laughs> imagine you're, you're drawing a circle on a, on, a, on a piece of paper, right? Sure. It might not be truly a circle. Mine wouldn't be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this one is. I uh, see. So, so does that go to manufacturing, or what's the difference there? It's it's all in the design, and also it's it's um it's made to very tight tolerances, Got so it. that you get this true circularity, and that means that when it, when the signal bounces off a certain object, it will be filtered to a much larger extent than with a uh, elliptical antenna. Well, and as a matter of fact, guys, uh, we were um yesterday when we were just trying to bodge this all together. Trappy was kind enough to loan us not only the screen we were using. But two of these antennas, and we were we were pretty impressed with the clarity we were getting. Now, why does it look like a tooth? Um, <laughs> actually, inside there's four dipoles. Okay. And they're cross shape, which starts to spin the signal. I've been told, so that's <laughs> I, I, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm not the expert. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but so that just that that shape sort of reflects the shape of the antenna exactly. embedded inside there. Will the pr production one have that look to it, or will it be more of a conventional circle? Uh, or we don't want to do a circle because we want to get the the size and the volume down as much as possible. Oh. So to get the the drag down, we'll probably put a little circle in here and probably we already got a little circle here on the bottom. Oh sure, so sure, yeah. Let me show that for the camera. So that it doesn't really <laughs> it looks like a tooth right now. <laughs> well, uh, it could be a solid marketing piece. You call it the molar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> oh, we've got a race going. Um, unfortunately, okay, there we go. We've got a race going right now, so Trappy, I will direct you to this, and we are looking at Fitz. Fitz, his video. We were watching right before he crashed. Now we're not watching his video anymore. Now we are watching car number three, which is Wargzy, Warg who's currently in the lead. So this is the lead pilot. What are you seeing? 
as a pilot right now. <laughs> this is very fast. He's very fast. <laughs> <laughs> He's ripping it. <laughs> yeah, he is really moving. Are, are you finding that as this as the as this event goes on, the pilots should be getting more and more confident, therefore faster and faster? Yeah, exactly. What I found is that when you when you race and um, at at first you get really nervous, and so your hands are shaking, and as as you continue, you get more and more flight time in. You, you become more and more relaxed. Um, what didn't help, though, is that now you got to finish the race. <laughs> so yesterday we were all being tactical. The first two laps were, were slow, and then we started progressing and progressing and progressing with the speed. But now now you got to finish the race, so you got to have a very consistent... I was gonna, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, la like yesterday, it was not uncommon to have three-quarters of the guys not finish. Yeah. And if you could get in, turn in one killer lap, but I mean, Mr. Steele turned in one under 20 seconds. Exactly. Which was amazing. But that's, that, that doesn't count for anything today. you yeah. got to complete lead all five yeah. and you got to be the fastest now i can't help but notice that only wargsy is still flying is, yeah. is uh is the only guy who's turning in any results at all <laughs> so <laughs> i'm wondering if bad things have happened out there on the field <laughs> just so everybody at home knows also flying in this race or perhaps attempting to fly in this race are ryan gurry fitz slashed zoe sternbaugh zoe full throttle we love you zoe steven silverglate and Michael Etherington. That, that, those names all sound familiar to me. We must be into the second heats now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah, I've been sitting behind this desk for like two hours. I have no idea what's happening out in the real world. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to hand off at some point and go out and see what's happening. All right, so it's Wargsy is the winner here in convincing fashion because nobody else even completed a lap. And, and he got a pretty good lap time as well, 26.56. No, he uh, he did really well. That's yep. he's a guy to watch. Now, when do you race next? Uh, I don't know. I missed my first heat, but uh, we were still sleeping. But uh, oh. yeah, we're, we're gonna get for the second one. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> well, outstanding. Well, I tell you what, Trappy, let's uh, let I will catch up with you later because right. I'd, I'd love to have a have more of a debrief with you on all manner of things. This just at home is that well, yesterday was the first time we ever met, but yep. we've probably never been on the same continent together exactly. before this, yeah. let alone in the same place. <laughs> so a real pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to talk last. to you. So, all right, thanks. Good luck today. Thank we'll you. We'll be watching for you. All right. All right, Thank take you. care.